What's up guys, welcome to the long awaited and highly demanded 27th C++ tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to protect your display functions from changing um, your original array. So uh, this is a problem that a lot of programmers have. Whenever they build a display function, then it somehow, one way or another, and we'll probably be, I'll probably be teaching you about this later, it changes the value of the arrays when it's just supposed to show them. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to protect um, well your functions from that. So let's first go ahead and make a function to populate an array. And I'll name it int populate. And it's going to take the parameters of an array. And I'm going to name it double and bucky. And it's also going to take the parameters of the um, number of elements in the array. So I'm going to name my int limit. Make sure you spell it right. And now we can go ahead and begin building this function. The first thing we want to do is make a temporary variable that is going to um, store the value. You'll see what it does later. So name it temp or temporary, whatever you want. And now we need to go ahead and build a basic loop. So put for int i equals zero and i is less than limit as brought in by this limit right here and then we just want to do i plus plus to iterate through the loop and what do we want this loop to do well for starters um let's just go ahead and give the user a prompt to enter say we're going to have them enter a dollar item for a bunch of different items so see out and let's just put something like enter dollars for item and then say item i plus one and then let's go ahead and we'll add another semicolon and that looks good so what this is going to do is just put a prompt out see if the limo is five it's going to loop through this five times and says enter a dollar item for item number one for item number two for item number three four or five and why do you put plus one instead of just i it's because the array starts at zero so this way the prompt can start at one and go all the way to zero so now what we have to do is go ahead and have them input that temporary variable and that looks good and then store it in the array where the array is the array number is equal to that temporary variable so now the array index um, bucky zero is going to be the first first thing they entered. Bucky one is going to be the second thing they entered. All the way depending on the size of your array. Now make sure I got all my semicolons. And what we can do now is go on and build our second function right here. Now now that we got a function to populate the array, we need a function to spit out pretty much the array just to display it to us. So I'm going to name my void spit since void display it's you know it's so boring and here's how you do this in order to protect the data from being changed you need to give it a constant variable type so instead of int or double you need to put c o n s t and this will keep your data constant so now we can go ahead and put double bucky just like before and again we need another variable int n and this is pretty much just going to be the uh, limit or however many um, items are in your array. So let's go ahead and make a basic loop for, and we'll just put same as before, int i, uh, set that equal to zero, and then go ahead and press i is less than n, and then we'll go ahead and do something like i plus plus, just to iterate through it um, one by one. And now we can go ahead and give this loop a body or some function. So now that we have an array already, we pretty much want to go through the array and output a price per item. So let's just make a simple output. No really uh, thinking here. What you need to do is go ahead and press price for item, then press a space, and then put i plus 1, and then put uh, something like, let's... Uh, here we go. Here's a good idea. Colon dollar amount. Oh crap. I put a bunch of stickers on my keyboard so I can't 
tell what one is the dollar one but I found it and now after that let's go ahead and just output C out Bucky with I so it loops through the array and let's just go ahead and end the line so it looks pretty so right here what we did is we built a function to populate the array and we also built a function to pretty much display the array so let's go ahead and prototype these right now so we don't forget so go ahead and remember in order to prototype it you have to copy that in under your namespace std just copy make sure you don't cut paste semicolon prototype copy and semicolon now let's go ahead and run this program to um, well see if it works pretty much what we need to do is make an array an empty array so put something like double items and put like five elements in it doesn't matter how many elements but uh, five looks like a good number then make then store a variable that well you'll see what it does int size and set it equal to populate since this was or whatever you named your function right here and again you need to pass it two things so we're going to pass it the array first which we named items in the limit of the array which is five so now add your semicolon for that and now size is the return value of populate items or size is this right here make sense so next we need to go ahead and press um, just call our spit function to spit out the elements of our array so let's go ahead and press spit and see what parameters it takes oh man my dumb oh, screen capture so spit takes two parameters um, it takes an array and it takes a number so let's go ahead and spit items since our array is items and our size is five so now go ahead and add our semicolon and let me expand this just because it's bugging me and now if we did everything right we can go ahead and execute our array and it should work out fine I hope so I got a feeling I got an error uh oh come on no whammy no whammy not bad so enter dollar for item 1 32 45 65 76 and 2 and now it just pretty much spits out the array so here's our first function right here which adds the elements to the array and here's our second function spit that just spits them out it goes through the loop and spits it all out and as you can see these are the exact same 32 45 32 45 65 76 2 65 76 2 and that is how you can protect data in your array and in the next tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys what if you want to change that data in your array and you actually want to change the value of it I'm going to be showing you guys a real quick function on how to do that but for this tutorial that's all I have so hopefully you learn a little something but not too much so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time